Welcome back to Mr. Wee Island. Today at Mr. Wee Island, we'll be learning that God is the ruler of all. Hi everybody. It's hard to believe we're already halfway through this week together of searching for who God is. Thankfully, we can keep following these clues the rest of our lives. The clues we find in the Bible have many facets, and every time we read it, we learn more. I am so thankful that the God of the Bible is a God who can be known. Every person on earth has a set of beliefs. Some people think there's no God. Some people believe that there are many gods. Some people make up what they want to believe about God based on their own opinions and feelings. We all know there's only one Eiffel Tower in Paris. It's true, it's, it's a fact. What if you went to see the Eiffel Tower for yourself? When you got home, you met someone who said they didn't believe there was such a tower. Then another person said, well, there are many towers. The one in Paris is just one of the many Eiffel Towers all over the galaxy. And then other people said, well, the tower you described isn't accurate. The tower I have seen is glittery and has a waterfall flowing out of it. What story are we to believe? In the same way, people have many different thoughts about God. We can listen to their opinions, we can listen to speakers, we could read books about God. But at the end of the day, we have to filter this information through the grid of God's Word. We must form our beliefs about who God is through the way He revealed Himself in the Bible. Isaiah shared with us his glimpse of God as ruler, so that we too may know more about God. God created everything that has ever been in existence, and if He created it all, then He has the right to rule over it. It is a beautiful description that Isaiah gives to us about God as our ruler and king. The Wano people reacted the same way to this fact as Isaiah did. Once Isaiah was faced with the knowledge of God's greatness, his holiness, his perfection, his gloriousness, he was humbled and said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Over and over we read in the Bible that when men and women come to an understanding of who God is, they see themselves in a proper light. God is ruler, and we need him because we're all sinners. The Wano people recognize this early on as we taught through the Old Testament. It was hard for them to hear the truth sometimes, and to understand that all people are born into a sinful state and a broken relationship to God. But understanding this was necessary for them to see themselves in a proper light. 
that they were not perfect, that they were not holy, they were sinners before God. All right, let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for being our king and our ruler. Thank you for being a perfect and holy God who's always just and righteous. Thank you that you are a fair ruler and that you can be trusted because of your faithfulness through all generations. Lord, I pray that as we search your word, we will understand more and more about you, that we will see more clearly our shortcomings and we will see more clearly your gloriousness. I pray that we will be quick to acknowledge you. I pray for each of us that we will find restoration and forgiveness in you and that we won't leave today without truly knowing you are our king. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Welcome back to Lighthouse Lessons, Islanders. Remember that on our first day, our medallion was the number one? Who remembers what that means? That's right, it stands for only one God. And yesterday's was a big zero. Do you remember why? Correct, God is almighty. He knows everything, he's everywhere, and he's all powerful. Let's dive right in and try to figure out today's clue. Check the ceiling. Check the floor. Now it's time to check a door. Hmm. There it is. All right, Islanders, in this bag, we have pictures that can fall into one of three categories. You at home are going to help us out by telling us what category each picture falls into. The categories are animals, people, or nature. Ready? Let's see our first picture. Where do, what do you think that belongs to? That's right, nature. Good job. Our second photo, people, yes. Next we have, that's right, animals. And next, what do you think? Right, animals again. It's exciting. And the next one, that's right, people. What do you think? Nature, good job. And I think this is our last one. God the Father. Hmm, which category does God the Father fit into? People, animals, or nature? That's right, it doesn't fit into any of those categories because God the Father is in a category all his own. Now, let's see what medallion we have for today. It's a king that says ruler. God is the king and the ruler of everything, which is why he fits in a category all his own. Let's see where it takes us on the map. Great White Gulf. Now, let's pray and we'll turn to the book of Isaiah and hear about a vision, like a dream, that God gave Isaiah about a king. Dear Heavenly Father, your name is great and above all things. Bless our time together as these islanders come together again to learn about you and see that you are ruler of all creation. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Just a minute, boys and girls. We are going to tell you a story that comes from Isaiah chapter 6, if you want to follow along in your Bible. It's verse 1. This is about the real king who lived a long time ago. 
Let's read our first rhyme to learn his name and figure out the missing word. King Uzziah died. God is alive. So who was King Uzziah? He was a famous king of God's chosen people. He had ruled the people well for 52 years. You know, human kings all die, don't they? It doesn't matter how famous they are, they still die. If they're good kings who rule well, they die. If they're wicked kings um, who, who rule wickedly, they die. Every human king's reign eventually ends. But God doesn't die. He is eternal. He is always king of everything. On to space two. Let's read the words together and try to figure out the missing word. Look heavenward, throne of the right Lord. So in the vision Isaiah was given by God, he looked heavenward. And guess what he saw? Yes, a throne, but not just any throne. Rulers sit on thrones, don't they? For instance, here are some pictures of king's thrones. But God's throne was super special. It was the greatest throne ever, and it was high and lifted up. The next thing Isaiah saw will blow you away. Let's say our third rhyme and try to figure out the missing word. Temple with robe could fill the globe. Yeah. This is incredible because years ago, a king's robe showed how important he was. The longer the robe, the more important the king. Here are some pictures of king's robes. How long was God's robe? Yes, it filled the whole temple. Imagine if a king were here in this building with a robe on and it filled the entire building, not just the front part or down the stairs, but over the entire thing. This shows that God is important in a different way than anyone else. He's a ruler in a category all his own. His robe could have filled the whole globe if he wanted it to. He is God. He is great. And he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't answer to anyone. A big word that means God is in charge and is the ruler of everything is... Sovereign. Do you see a smaller word at the end of sovereign? Yes. Reign. Countries that have kings as their leaders sometimes call them sovereign because they reign or rule over that country. But God is sovereign to none or like none other. He reigns over everyone and everything. And the good news is he's not just a powerful king. He's good. Can you imagine if he was powerful but mean? Or good but not powerful? Mm. Thankfully, he is perfect in power and perfect in goodness. Let's see if we can figure out the missing word in the next rhyme as we say it together. Seraphim flies covered their eyes. You may be saying to yourself, what are seraphim? Good question. Seraphim are a type of angel. They are only mentioned here, nowhere else in the Bible. Of course, nobody on earth but Isaiah really knows what they looked like. But we'll use our imaginations based on the description in the Bible, realizing that they would have been much more majestic and incredible than our imagination could ever show us. On to the next thing. So far, Isaiah has been seeing some amazing things. Now he's going to hear something amazing. Let's read our rhyme and try to put in the missing word. Holy was heard. Super important word, exactly. The word holy doesn't mean full of holes. What do you think it means? Right. It means to be set apart, 
God is set apart. He is not like anyone else. He's pure and perfect, never doing or thinking anything wrong. There's not one bad thing in God. It's impossible for him to think even one bad thought. He's always good and perfect, and he's the source of every single good thing ever to happen. Every good thing you've ever experienced, a mouthful of food, a good night's sleep, a warm bed, every person who loves you is from God. This is the only time in the Bible an attribute of God is repeated three times in a row. This repetition shows it's important for us to understand that God is holy, holy, holy. Of course, we can never be perfectly holy like God, not even close, but God does want us to live pure lives that reflect him well. We can only do this if we are children of God because we need him to help us. We can't become truly holy on our own. We're on to our last rhyme now. Let's say it together and figure out the missing word. Tell your story about God's glory. Yes. First, we learned about the word holy. Now here's another big word, glory. What do you think that means? Yep, the glory of God shows how great and mighty he is. The whole earth shouts out the greatness and fame of God. That doesn't mean it's actually shouting out, but that God's amazingness is on display. The waterfall shows us his powerful glory. The sunrise shows us his beautiful glory. The birds singing in the trees show us his creative glory. This says the whole earth is full of his glory. This means every single thing God has created shows us how amazing God is in some way. For example, have you ever looked up in the sky at night and been amazed to see all the stars? Or have you ever stood by the ocean so huge and beautiful? The ocean shows God's glory. Or have you watched an amazing little critter or marveled at an animal at the zoo? or watched a snowflake fall, or thought about how amazing it is that Jesus came to earth. Even you were created to bring God's glory. In fact, that's the whole point, point, point of why we're alive. He made you to bring him glory and enjoy him forever. I think Sonny wants to chime in about this. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. So let's call him. Remember, boys, we'll say one, two, three. There we go, boys and girls. One, two, three, Sunny! Oh, hi! Wait a minute now. You're not Surfer Sunny, and you're not Super Sunny. Who are you? Oh, I'm Sweet Sunny. And guess what? I was just watching the movie Cinderella. Oh, was it good? Oh, yeah. I like movies with kings and queens and princes and princesses. In fact, I like to play kings and queens with my friends. Well, you know, Sonny, we have been talking about a king who isn't like any other king. This king is perfect and good and rules the whole universe. He's alive forever. Oh, 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 do you mean God? Yep. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, that reminds me of a song. It's called, He's the King of Kings. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, he is the King. Hey, Sonny, I like that song. Yeah, yeah, that, it's fun to sing to God. It sure is. Singing praises is a great way to show how great and wonderful and loving our God is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to sing to God every day. Oh, how about this one? I love bananas. I love pineapples. I love apples and ice cream and cherry pie. Uh, well, that's a fun song, Sonny, but... It doesn't have anything to do with God. You may want to sing songs about God to God. And besides singing, another way to show how much we honor and worship him is to praise him as we pray to him. 
Oh, what does praise mean? It's a kind of bragging about God. It's telling him how amazing he is. We can do this when we pray to him. Oh, well, well, how do we pray to God? Well, we just talk to him. We can't see him, but he's listening. Oh, cool beans. God! God, I think you're an amazing ruler and king! Did he hear that? Uh, yeah, he sure did. But you don't have to shout up to heaven. Just talk in your normal voice, and he'll hear you. You can even think praises to God. He knows what you're thinking. And you know what else we should want to do when we find out about how great God is? Oh, no. What? Oh, oh, wait, I know. Do the chicken dance. I love the chicken dance. No, silly. <laughs> I'm not talking about doing the chicken dance. Instead, we should want to tell others about God and his wonders. Oh, right. God is the incredible ruler of the universe. He sure is. You know, God made everything and is in charge of it all. Can you think of something God has made that you think is fabulous? Oh, 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 yeah, I do. I know something. I know something. Earwax. You know that gooey yellow stuff that's in your ears? Oh, I think that's fabulous. Sonny, be serious. Oh, I am being serious. Did you know earwax protects your ears from getting bad germs and water in them? God was really smart to create that. I think it's wonderful. Well, I guess you have a point there. And, and how about eyelashes? They help to protect your eyes from getting things like sand and dust in them. Okay, I think we hear what you're saying, Sonny. God made those things and so much more. We can talk to other people about our amazing God and never run out of great things to say to him. Oh, that's for sure. I think I'm going to go tell my mom how amazing God is to have created earwax. <laughs> okay, Sonny, go for it. And we'll plan to see you tomorrow. Islanders, let's say goodbye to Sonny, okay? One, two, three. Bye, bye Sonny. Bye-bye, Islanders. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness.